Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Are Intel about to delay Alchemist until Q3 2022? Well, that seems to be a rumor that's circulating on the internet right now, despite the fact that the company have officially stated a launch of Q2 2022. Although that is with a caveat. It seems to be some limited edition card that actually is going to be Q2, at least according to Intel's official statements. And they haven't really given that much information information concerning other cards in the lineup. But Intel's Alchemist cards have basically been plagued with delays, and even on the laptops, despite the fact that the lower performance variants are now launched, quote unquote, we haven't really seen exactly great availability, essentially only in one region and only in very limited quantities, with the higher performance uh, variants coming later on. Even XCSS isn't going to see a launch until summer. Now, I just want to be really clear up front, I do think Intel's longer term graphics plans will be actually pretty impressive. And to my understanding, architectures like Battle Mage improve things quite significantly, particularly when it comes to performance. But just to be clear, there does seem to be a number of delays which Intel have been uh, facing internally. And this information with the Q3 delay actually comes from website Billy Billy. I'll of course link it in the video description along with WCCF Tech where I actually spotted this. And the poster was Enthusiastic Citizen who's had a pretty good track record in the past. They mention four SKUs specifically, A770, 750, a 580 and finally a 380 but i believe they are most likely missing one card at least which i think is probably called a 780 the basic difference between the 780 and 770 to my personal understanding is that the 770 only has a 192 bit memory bus whereas the A780 has 256-bit and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And Intel have already provided us some teasers as to the configuration of this desktop card. So quite a while ago, I actually posted a video that I'd been personally hearing that Intel would not launch a desktop until Q3, possibly even Q4, but more likely Q3. And then shortly thereafter, Intel themselves officially stated that we would actually see a launch in Q3. Q2. Now, I want to be abundantly clear. What Intel says, essentially, as their official word, is always worth more than a leak. But since I posted that video, a number of my sources did get back to me and still said that they were think that they were expecting some delays for the Intel Alchemist architecture. Although the silicon itself has come on quite a bit over the past several months, what they have been facing are a number of software issues. Basically, it comes down to inconsistent performance with DirectX 11, DirectX 12, Vulkan, and so on and so on. And it's very easy to call Intel out here, and I'm certainly not saying that they should just make these statements and then perhaps don't get a little bit of a teasing. However, they are essentially, well, basically trying to compete against two highly established brands. And I would much rather them delay an architecture by several months if necessary, and then release a product which doesn't have major bugs in it. We've all seen products that have launched and they've just had huge bugs. I mean, do you remember even when AMD released Polaris back in the day, and it was actually drawing more power from the PCIe slot? I didn't have any personal issues with mine, but other people did. And I do believe that Intel in the longer term will do rather well in the graphics arena. They've hired a lot of talented individuals from both NVIDIA and AMD, plus others as well. And their engineering department is starting to swell. It takes quite a long time to really put things on track. And I have heard that Battle Mage is probably going to have a two and a half to three times performance leap over their current generation. But again, it's not going to be as fast as AMD or NVIDIA's latest or greatest, but it's going to be very competitive. Interestingly, I've heard Battle Mage, although the uh, rasterization performance is around three times faster, say. I have been told that ray tracing is a considerable bump above this. Curiously, too, we have Citizen also mention that there's an A750 model. Now, I actually have said a couple of times in much older videos, I don't honestly remember how long ago now, it was quite a long time ago, 
that we would actually see a 448 execution unit variant, but later leaks seem to indicate that this possibly was cancelled. Of course, at the end of the day, AMD and NVIDIA both launch cards in different waves as well. I personally think that Intel will probably make the Q2 release date, probably very late, but most likely with only like a limited edition product, and then later on they will start to swell out the ranks of the cards. Again, I personally don't mind this too much, providing we actually have a product which is competitive. These cards are not going to be as fast as something like RTX 40, but they don't have to be. What they do need to be is A, stable, B, they need to be, you know, fully featured, and C, they, of course, need great availability. And ultimately, I think as long as Intel hits those specific criteria, we are good to go. Speaking of things which are good to go, Zen 4 is going to launch later this year with the Ryzen 7000 series. And I think that AMD are going to have a really just an amazing architecture on its hands here. Basically, the best way of describing Zen uh, 4, so I was about to say Zen 3 there, is to say you take everything that's great about Zen 3, and then you basically just turn all the dials up past 11, like probably about 259 would be the dial. Uh, for example, L2 cache has seen an increase from 512 kilobytes to 1 megabyte, and so on and so on. Although L3 cache is pretty much untouched but there are a plethora of improvements across the cache we see some improvements on both the front and back end clock frequencies are ramped up as well but you know what intel of course are not just going to sit on their asses and not provide a competitor of sorts well i say competitor because ultimately we don't know how either of these architectures face off against one another is a very interesting benchmark which has actually emerged. I want to give cre uh, credit to Momomo on Twitter. I actually follow them and they're a pretty good account. And this is from User Benchmark. Now I know, I know User Benchmark has become a bit of a meme here. And I certainly wouldn't advocate you use them necessarily against like AMD and uh, Intel. But Intel versus Intel does give some fairly meaningful comparisons. And there is actually a 13th generation processor which has been tested. So this is a Raptor Lake P processor. And uh, videocards.com have also done a pretty nice comparison between the different CPUs here. Long story short, we can see that the 13th generation are actually well, it's just, it's quite easily defeating the 12th generation by quite a lot. And this is interesting because of a couple of things. First of all, the core count is essentially identical for the uh, 12900 versus the uh, 13900. I'm assuming it's that. It could be, it could be anything unofficial, you know, when the processors officially release. But nevertheless, the core count and thread count is identical, 14 slash 20. The base clock, though, and turbo frequencies are definitely behind that of the HK. You can just check Intel's ARC. No, not with the C, but with the K. And you can indeed see that the 12900HK does boost and also operate at different clock frequencies. This is possibly a really good sign that Raptor Lake is going to have a significant performance advantage over Alder Lake. There's a lot of debate, of course, online already of whether Intel or AMD is going to have the crown. And it's kind of difficult to know like the 12900 hk here has a base speed around 400 megahertz improved so it does seem that intel are going to do quite well with raptor lake personally i suspect that it's going to be very much dependent upon several conditions like when we're talking about performance the first thing is what are we referring to are we talking about 1t or are we talking about you know infinite number of threads are all of the threads all of the calls running the second question is what workload like it's really easy to say something along the lines of intel are faster or amd is faster but what workload are we talking about? Are we talking about game workloads? Are we talking about some very specific benchmark? Are we talking about AVX 512 workloads? Because remember, Zen 4 does support AVX 512. Personally, I'm guessing that Intel will probably have a multi-thread advantage and AMD will basically have the single-thread advantage. However, I do suspect that this is going to be highly skew versus skew dependent, and it's also going to depend upon a plethora of other things like well 
yeah, workloads and obviously power consumption as well. For example, if Intel are drawing twice as much wattage, yeah, they're winning, but does it matter? I don't know. It's really, of course, down to you. I'm going to be really interested, though, to see how Raptor Lake actually ends up. I've been hearing it's got around a 10% IPC gain, but again, what workloads? I heard that that was an average. So it's going to be really interesting, especially given that we covered some news, I think it was yesterday, that the clock frequency of the 13th generation uh, with the 13900, sorry, the 13900, that's weirdly difficult to say, uh, can actually hit something along the lines of 5.7, 5.8 gigahertz. That's for the desktop variant, which is around two to 300 megahertz higher. That's according to another leaker. I believe it is one Raichu. I don't mean to misattribute that information, so I could be wrong there for who actually leaked it. But yeah, I think Intel and AMD are definitely going to be in really interesting jockeying positions over the next couple of years. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. I wasn't actually intending to record today, but I really wanted to cover the Intel Alchemist stuff as I found it rather intriguing. So yeah, just a quick video for today and uh, I will see you all soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.